All right, um, we're going to do an inquiry today. Uh, if you go up under Jedi, Jedi Academy Energy Momentum, you can go down to the inquiry on collisions. That will bring you to this page. And the purpose is to analyze the conservation of momentum. So hopefully you've been doing some of the problems, and we're going to kind of play around with a little applet here today. Um, it says here that we will use the applet below to experiment with momentum. An elasticity of 0% means completely inelastic and the balls will stick together. So down here on this right corner here, you'll see elasticity, and I can turn it all the way to inelastic or all the way up to elastic. If it's on inelastic, they'll actually stick together. If it's on elastic, they'll uh, completely uh, bounce off, and the kinetic energy will also be conserved. Elastic means kinetic energy and momentum is conserved. Inelastic means the kinetic energy is not conserved. Momentum is always conserved. After you have tested the momentum ideas, attempt the following two problems at the bottom. You can see the results of these two scenarios within this applet to check your answers, but you need to show work in your notebook. So there, down at the bottom, there's two uh, inquiry questions that uh, I'm going to do for you, but uh, we're going to see if you can figure them out uh, first, maybe. Okay, um, so uh, uh, we're, in, we're in this applet here. Um, you can, uh, there's the ball, a red ball and a green ball. Um, you can change their masses right here, or I think you can actually, yeah, you can uh, make the masses bigger by the sliders right here. Um, if you click more data, um, uh, there's the position where it's at. We're not going to worry about that, but there's also the velocities. So um, you can come up and change the velocities by just dragging the arrow around. I can go either, this is only two dimensional here, it's either left or right. So I can go like something like this and make this one maybe smaller. And uh, you can actually just also just plug in the masses. Like I want this one to be a mass of one or something like this. And it'll tell you right here what the momentums are at this given moment. We haven't started it yet. But the momentum right here before would be 0.42 and 0.44. And you get that by taking the mass times the velocity. Take this mass times this velocity and you'll have that momentum. So it calculates it for you. If I click play, here's a simulation speed. So if I want it to all go really slow, the process to go slow, I can do like that. Click play, and you'll see the momentums are staying the same, and then boom, now the momentum's changed. Then click pause, and you can see that now the momentums are different because the uh, the masses are the, still the same, but the velocity's all changed a little bit. Um, you can restart it, and uh, I could do... Um, Something like, let's see, I guess I can put this position probably even farther away, can I? Whoops, that was too far, I think. Three, there we go. And I'll change the velocity over something like this. So here's the starting momentums of both of these. You'll see the momentum of the green ball is negative. That's because the velocity is going to be negative. Momentum is also a vector quantity. It's going to have negative momentum. So you could add them both up to get the total momentum. So I click play. We're going to come in here and then... Boom, and you'll see that the momentum of the green ball now is positive because the it, velocity is positive. Now the momentum of the red ball is negative and the velocity is negative. And you added these up, you'll still get the same, same momentum because momentum is always conserved. Um, I'll restart that. Uh, what if we uh, make this completely inelastic and we do this? We click play, and they're coming in here, and there's a certain amount of momentum, and... They're going to be stuck together. You'll see that they still have momentum, total momentum, because they're still actually moving um, ever so slightly. Um, I'll restart that. Let's make this one really, really big and this one really, really small and play that. So what do we got now? Boom. Okay, so the, the, the momentum would still be the same. But the energy, if you calculated the energy, the kinetic energy of these things, it would actually be different. Um, we'll restart that. Let's make this elastic again. Let's show, uh, we can show some things on here. Momentum vectors. Okay, that momentum vector is going to be staying as the velocity vectors. Um, what's this? Ooh, momentum diagram. Kinetic energy. There's kinetic energy, how much kinetic energy it has. So we're going to click play. That's the total kinetic energy. And uh, it's still the same, right? It's still the same because we made it elastic. Let's restart that, do inelastic. There's the kinetic energy, and now the total kinetic energy is a lot less, right? Because we lost a lot of energy by friction or deformation of the, of the parts and stuff. Okay, 
Um, so you should be able to play, play around with this for a while and kind of just experiment around. Um, let's show values. Oh, you know, that's good. Show values of everything. Okay. You can do that, I guess, too. So there's a whole bunch of other things you can do. Uh, by the way, there's an advanced uh, section up here where we can actually do it in uh, two dimensions. And we can practice some of the problems like this. With the, so these are actually vectors, so it can be a little confusing. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Okay. Um, or you can use this one to do uh, just one-dimensional vectors, and you can do it like you did on that first on the introduction page, too. Um, oh, you can even turn on sound. I don't know if you heard that or not. Okay. All right. Um, good. So, um, I'm going to... So what you should try to attempt to do is uh, you should attempt these two problems down here. And uh, then I'll try to solve them for you and you can see if you got them right or not. But then after we're done with that, we'll go ahead and test these. All right, this problem is the first problem on the inquiry. We're going to do, uh, we're actually going to do an inquiry. There's an online applet that you can play around with it, but basically there's two problems you need to solve and they're somewhat challenging. They're not challenging because they, um, they have vectors at angles. They're actually both just going back and forth, left and right. So that, that part's easier, but, uh, this is a little, little tricky. Um, we're going to have to use some, uh, you know, multiple equation substitutions kind of things in here. So if you look what it says here, it says create the following settings for a completely elastic collision. So that right there is key. It's a completely elastic collision. If you remember what that means, it means that uh, momentum is conserved as always. All, momentum is always conserved, but it also means that your kinetic energy would also be conserved. So your kinetic energy before the collision needs to equal the kinetic energy after the collision. That's going to be very helpful. That's going to give us another equation to be able to solve for this uh, particular problem. It says, show detailed work on how to calculate the final velocities of both of the balls. There's a red ball and a green ball, and it tells you the masses and the velocities before they collide, but they're not going to stick together. So you need to figure out what are both of their velocities after the collision. That could be a, a, little, a little tricky. So um, first thing we want to do is uh, kind of set up some equations. We know that the momentum before needs to equal the momentum after. So we have uh, momentum before and then um, we'll have the momentum uh, after, and we can set up an, a, uh, an equation here. So what is the momentum uh, before? Well, the momentum before is uh, um, the red ball is uh, 2, mass of 2, times a velocity of 10. And then the uh, momentum of the green ball is, has a mass of 3, times the velocity of, uh, of a negative 6. So that means it's going the opposite way that the other one is going. Okay, what's the momentum after? Um, well, the momentum after is going to be the mass of the red ball, 2, uh, times um, the velocity of the red ball. And that's what we're trying to figure out. We don't really know what that is. So we're going to just put in a, a, a red velocity in there. Okay? Fancy, huh? Yeah, fancy. All right, plus um, what's the mass of the green ball? It's 3 times the velocity of the green ball. We don't know what that is either, so we're going to put a, a green V in for that, okay, as our variable. All right, so what do we got? We have 2 times 10 is 20 uh, plus um, a negative 18. So 20 minus 18 is a mo total momentum of 2 before. And afterwards, it's going to be uh, um, um, 2 times, uh, times the red velocity, uh, plus 3 times the uh, green velocity, okay? And um, what I can do here to simplify this equation, I'm going to divide the whole thing by 2 right, right away. So I'll have 1 equals uh, um, the red velocity, I guess, just the red velocity only, right? Um, plus, plus, if I take 3 divided by 2, that's going to be uh, 1.5. Um, times the uh, green velocity. So that kind of simplified the equation a little bit. Okay, now um, it's elastic, so we also know that the kinetic energy before is going to equal the kinetic energy uh, after. All right, so let's, let's do that. Let's do uh, um, kinetic energy 
uh, before and kinetic energy um, after. Okay, um, so the kinetic energy before would be uh, one half times uh, the mass, the red ball, which is two, times uh, 10 squared, plus uh, one half times three, times uh, negative six squared. That'd be everything before. That should equal everything afterwards. Afterward, it's gonna be one half, one half times two times, um, and we don't know the we don't know the uh, velocity of the red ball. Remember, so we're going to put in v squared, okay? Plus uh, one half times three times um, the green velocity. We don't know that, so we're going to put in a green v, okay? All right, and I I can try to simplify this out if I. One half of two, I can cross off the twos, that'd be 100. And then one half of, uh, of three is 1.5 times a 36 squared is a 54. So that's going to be 154 equals, uh, the twos will cancel out there, and you're going to get, um, you're going to get a, uh, a red V squared, right? Red V squared uh, plus a 1.5... Uh, green V uh, squared. Okay, so we got two equations there. Um, and we're, we're trying to, and we know that, so we know both of these equations right here are, are true. And we're trying to figure out what is the red velocity and what is the green velocity. That's what we're trying to figure out. So we have two unknowns in each equation. And this is why we, it's good to have two equations because we can solve for one and plug into the other. So um, the, let's look at, let's solve for the red V on this first equation. What would the red V uh, be equal to? Well, it'd be equal to uh, 1 minus 1 1.5 um, green V, right? Okay, so this equation here, uh, we want to take this and we want to put it down in for that V right there, okay? And I'm totally out of room, so we're going to... Uh, um, we're going to have to redo this here on the other side, I think. So uh, let's, let's do a new page here. And so if I, if, if I can do that, if you have that written out on your paper, um, I'm going to get uh, 154 um, equals, and then I'm going to put that VR in for the, uh, the VR squared. So, but I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to do it 1 minus 1.5. Um, V, right? Okay, times uh, 1 minus 1 1.5 uh, V, because we're going we're gonna to square that, right? Okay, um, and then uh, let's see, it'd be plus uh, 1.5 um, V, and that is uh, squared. Okay, so I substituted that in. Let's go back here real quick. I took this and I plugged it down into here. Okay, so I, and this is squared, so I just kind of put it side by side there. Hopefully, you can you can see what we did there. So we don't we no longer have a, a red V in there anymore because we substituted it in, right? Okay, um, so we can uh, we can do some math on this on these things. Uh, we'd have uh, one fifty. 154 would equal, um, if I, what do you call that, foil it, foil it, 1 minus 3 uh, times the, uh, you know, the green V um, plus um, 2.25 VG squared, or velocity, green velocity squared plus 1.5 velocity squared, so I'm going to, I can combine those and get a um, get a 3.75 um, velocity squared. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I need to solve for a velocity green velocity is what I'm trying to do. Uh, you'll notice that that's gonna be kind of difficult here. Um, I'm gonna take the 154 to the other side and kind of rearrange some things. So zero equals 3.75. Uh, velocity squared, right, minus, minus three 
green velocity um, minus uh, 153. And see, so we have a quadratic here, right? We have a quadratic. Okay, so if you remember how to do that, uh, opposite b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. There you go. Okay, and so I can plug things in there. Um, opposite b, um, opposite b would be a, a would be a three. Okay, and I'll do plus or minus uh, the square root of b squared minus four ac. I'm gonna, I'm going to let you calculate that out, um, and hopefully get the same thing I got. If I if you take the square root of b squared minus four ac, I get a value of forty eight. That's messed up. Okay all over um, 2a, which is uh, 7.5, if you calculate that out. Okay, so um, I could do 3 plus 48, get a 51 divided by 7.5. I could do 3 minus 48 and divide by 7.5, and I get two possible answers here. I get a, a plus 6.8, and I get a negative, uh, I get a negative 6. Okay, for, for my green, for my green. So which one is it going to be? Which one is it going to be? Well, if you remember, at uh, the beginning, the green ball was had a velocity of negative 6. When it crashes into the red ball, it's going to go back the other way. So we're actually looking for a positive value. The positive value has to be the correct value. So that means the answer to the green ball needs to be this plus point six, uh, 6 6.8. Sorry, 6.8. Okay. Um, uh, now, if you remember on the, on the first page... First page, we had an equation for the velocity of the red ball right here. And we're going to substitute in the green ball in for this V and solve for that, uh, for that uh, red ball. So um, I'll just try to, maybe I'll just try to rewrite that here. The velocity of the red ball um, equals um, maybe 1 minus 1.5 times uh, the uh, the 6.8, right? Okay, and uh, if you do that, um, for the velocity of the red ball, there you go, velocity of the red ball um, should be like a negative 9.2. So the velocity of the red ball is a negative 9.2. Uh, the velocity of the green ball was a, a plus 6.8 and those should make sense because the red ball was going in a positive direction now it's going in the negative direction the velocity of the green ball is going in a negative direction now it's going in the, the positive direction and we use the conservation of uh, momentum and the conservation of energy to give us two equations to be able to find the uh, the velocities of of both of those problems that was kind of tricky a kind of a tricky problem there, but you can uh, now go into the uh, simulation, the little applet on there, put in the initials uh, of velocities, and go ahead and run it, run the simulation, and see if your final velocities are are what we uh, what we arrived at. Okay, so hopefully you uh, have solved the problem. We're going to go ahead and test these things. Um, the red ball has a mass of uh, two and the green ball has a mass of 3. In the first problem, the velocity is uh, whoop, the velocity is 10, and the uh, green velocity is a negative 6. Um, I'm going to turn off the velocity vectors there. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I, you know what? I need to restart. 10, negative 6. Let's, do, let's put the positions further away. Um, 2, 3. Okay, I'll do that. Getting farther away there. Um, so what, we're what we tried to do in the first problem is to see what the final velocities would be of both of the balls. Um, the momentum before is 20 and a negative 18 is a, is a 2. Remember, we, that's what we should have figured out. Um, let's uh, show the values, I guess. So there's the velocities. This is negative 6. This is going to be a positive 10. We're going to go ahead and run that and see what the final velocities are. So we run them. Oh, oops, we're in still in an elastic. This was supposed to be elastic, so we restart. Let's show the kinetic energy values also. So the kinetic energy, there we go, is uh, 154. That's what we figured out. Momentum before would be a uh, two. So we're gonna slow this down here a little bit on how fast it's gonna do it. 
and we're gonna let it go and boom and I'll pause it and you'll see that the kinetic energy is still 154 and now the velocity of the red one is a negative 9.2 and the velocity of the green one is a 6.8 and I believe uh, that's correct that's what we had figured out okay part two of this inquiry is a lot easier than part one was um, it says do the same exact settings exact same settings so same situation so we can use a lot of our math that we did earlier uh, but this time we're going to set up a completely inelastic collision. I, hopefully you can find out how to do that in the app. Um, a completely inelastic collision actually means that these two balls are going to actually stick together and then continue to move that way. So um, there'll be one object afterwards, which actually makes this problem um, a whole lot easier. We're going to try to figure out how to calculate the loss of kinetic energy, how much energy is lost because it's an inelastic collision. So energy is not going to be conserved like it was in the first problem. It's not going to be conserved. We're definitely going to lose um, energy. So the first thing we want to do that is we need, still need to figure out what's the velocity of the two ball mass at the end. So um, we're going to do conservation of momentum again first. So we're going to do a two, um, whoops, I guess I better get my pen there, two um, times 10 uh, plus three times a negative six will give us our total momentum. Uh, this is 20, this is uh, negative 18, so we have a total momentum of 2. Uh, what's the momentum afterwards, because it actually needs to be equal? Well, afterwards, you have um, you have the 2-kilogram ball and the 3-kilogram ball uh, joined together. I don't even ask how it's still rolling, but just don't, don't worry about that part. So 2 plus 3 is 5, so we have a total mass of 5, and then we need to figure out what is the velocity of that thing. So... So this is an easy problem, right? We don't have two unknowns. I can take uh, 2 divided by 5 uh, to get my velocity, and that ends up being like 0.4 uh, meters per second. So there's the velocity of the two, uh, two ball mass at the end of the, uh, after the collision. And that's really all we need to know now to figure out what's the kinetic energy after the collision. We remember the kinetic energy before... We've already calculated this, but we'll go ahead and do it again real quick just to review. One half times the mass of the red ball, which is two times 10 squared, uh, plus one half the mass of the green ball, three times a, uh, um, a negative six squared, and that in, ended up being 154 uh, joules. We'll assume it's joules if those are kilograms and meters per second. So that'd be 154 kilojoules, or 154 joules, sorry, of kinetic energy before. What is it afterwards? Kinetic energy after would be, well, there's only one object. So afterwards, it's one half. What's the mass of the whole object? It's two plus three, it's five, right? And what's the velocity? It's 0.4 squared. We figured that out right up here, okay? So if I do that, um, I actually get uh, still 0.4 uh, joules, 0.4 joules afterwards. So the question is just how much, how much kinetic energy did it, did it lose? So uh, that's pretty easy. I take 154 um, minus uh, 0.4, and that'll give me uh, what 153.6 joules of energy lost. Basically, we lost almost all of it. In fact, if you want to do a percent loss, like we have been doing, you take 153.6, you can take this, and you divide it by the 154. And this correlates to a, basically a 99.7% loss. So you should run this in the uh, simulation, in the applet, and you'll see that uh, when the two collide and they stick together, it's barely even moving. And you should be able to see what the final velocity is. And you'd be able to see that it lost basically all of its energy. So that's part two of the inquiry. Um, please try to know how to do both those problems. Um, you might get a problem like this on the Jedi trial um, and then run it in the applet to kind of see it visually that it's actually happening uh, that way. So that's uh, part two. And uh, basically that's all the lectures and the inquiries. Um, I will continue to make some videos of eLab problems as soon as anyone posts um, a question in the text channel about how to do one of those problems. I will then solve it for you in a video. Probably won't solve any of them for you unless you, you post it in there. So I need to know that you need help on something. 
Um, if you're getting them all, then fine. But otherwise, uh, if you are stumped on one, uh, just ask me how to do it, and I will post a video solution in the, uh, in the channel. Okay, good luck. Friday is the Momentum Jedi trial. Okay, so for part two, if you remember, now we're going to do completely inelastic. So we're going to switch this to inelastic. Okay, same situation. Um, we're going to try to figure out how much kinetic energy we lost. So we have 154 right there now at the beginning. We're going to go ahead and run this. Now they're going to stick together. And now we have kinetic energy, still some kinetic energy, but it's only 0.4. So um, the velocities of both of these things stuck together is 0.4. And I believe that also comes out exactly what we thought we were supposed to have in our problem. So uh, hopefully we solve the problems correctly and we can test it with this applet. And uh, you can come into the advanced section if you'd like and uh, do some testing at uh, you know in two-dimensional um, areas if you'd like, you know, and try to do some some things like that because you can have your velocity, I think, probably go up at an angle and like something like this, right? And you can play and see what happens, okay? And you can uh, try to figure some of the things out.